Right, well, because I'm an idiot, I didn't intro the video, so I'm gonna have to do it now. So pretty much this is my 4K 120 test for the Canon EOS R5. Um, everything you see, it was shot over like two days, because like the first day we, we started shooting, I didn't get too much um, footage purely because it got dark properly quick. I didn't realize it was gonna get dark that quickly. So we took another trip out yesterday and done some more 120. So um, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna bang some drone shots in here as well, just cause I feel like I haven't given old Pedro here um, the time of day during any videos and I'm wobbling like crazy because this camera weighs about 85 kilograms. I was gonna say pounds, but I don't actually know what pounds, whatever, I need to stop talking. Anyway, so enjoy the footage. Um, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. If you have any suggestions for any videos we should do, please let me know down in the comments below. I always nearly say description. Anyway, onto the footage. Let's go. Okay, so unlike at the beginning of this video, I did actually shoot my final um, thoughts on the R5, uh, but I, uh, I, I um, format the SD card, um, which is completely my bad and uh, completely all the blame goes to me. Um, but to be fair, I wanted to reshoot it anyway because there was a lot of rambling in there. And also right at the end, I'm going to give you a little bonus tip as well if you actually want to get your hands on an R5 because they are currently unavailable everywhere. Um, so, final thoughts on the R5. Um, I do really, really like it. The quality is absolutely phenomenal, as you can see. Um, what? Okay, there's there, there's a couple of burdens I have with the R5. One, the file sizes are absolutely humongous um, for uh, 4K, 120, and 8K, which is obviously to be expected because of how high quality it is. Um, but um, I know on the A7 III, the new Sony that's just come out, the file sizes are a lot smaller. Um, so that's the one burden I have, but also the Canon probably looks a lot better. Obviously, I don't have an A7 III to compare directly to uh, the R5, but um, for what I have seen, the R5 performs a hell of a lot better um, than the A7 III, explaining exactly why I uh, I, I got this camera. Um, the other burden I have with this camera is obviously, as you'll know from the other day, if you watch my previous video, if not, then I'll link it down in the description. Um, Pretty much you can't record 4K 120 to a standard SD card. Um, so switching between um, the SD card and the CF Express card, which the CF Express card is the only thing that you can shoot um, 4K 120 and 8K to, um, is just a bit annoying, quite frankly, and obviously 
trying to figure out what is where and what SD card is what um, is also a bit time consuming and um, and quite annoying to be quite honest. Um, the other um, burden I have with the R5 is that the only other thing that I can complain about with the R5 is um, obviously on the box it states it shoots raw. Um, but actually it only shoots 8k raw. It doesn't shoot 4k raw, 4k 120 raw, 4k 60 raw, 4k 30, 1080, any of that. It's, you can't shoot raw in that. You can only shoot 8k raw, which in a way I almost feel like Canon decided that they were going to just do that so that they could sort of just show off to competitors almost. But realistically, I do don't think many people, including myself, are going to really use 8K. Um, like I've said, the file sizes are just absolutely out of this world. Like they are flipping huge. Um, so it's just not practical, really. And the fact you can't shoot it to a SSD, which I know you can on um, like some of the Blackmagic cameras, which would make life a hell of a lot easier because if you are doing like 8K, like short films or something it wouldn't be that annoying to really carry a ssd around with you um i mean it would be a bit of a pain but for the sake of not filling up your um cf express card like that because they are expensive cx cs cf express cards are very very expensive like for example i bought um in fact i think i have it some yeah it's here so how do you get this thing out? You have to push it. Brilliant. Right, so this is what I bought. All right, it's not going to focus on it, but it's a 128 um, gig CF Express card, and um, that will get seven minutes of 4K 120. Um, I don't know what it does in 8K because I, I haven't even bothered to shoot 8K yet because, as like I've said, it's just impractical. You can't export it out on Premiere. Um, so, yeah, quite frankly, it's just... It's just not worth it, the 8K. Um, obviously, future proofing, pr future proofing the camera is awesome, which is another reason I bought the R5, because it's future-proofed. It does do 8K, um, which means once 8K monitors and 8K TVs become a bit more normalised, um, then, uh, then I can theoretically go and shoot 8K. And hopefully, I mean, if, it's, if CF Express cards drop in... Uh, in price as well, which realistically they should do in the next couple of years or so. Um, then again, I've future proofed and I'm ready to, to, to shoot 8K basically. Um, but I do almost feel like a Canon just put it on the box just to basically say, ha, oh, fuck you, Sony. Like, look what we've got. Um, it, it's just not practical, really. Um, it's nice to have like I've said, for future proofing, but it isn't practical. Um, other things with the R5 that I like, um, the menu system is pretty, is, 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 is normal Canon. If you've used the Canon before, they're very easy to navigate. It's very easy to just take it out the box. You don't really have to read many instructions on in, in the booklet. I don't really read instructions anyway. Um, the only thing I did have to to check is is the reason I couldn't shoot 4K 120, which I, I actually asked Canon on I said on their live chat, I was like, why can't I use 120? And they were like, oh, it's not available with standard SD cards. So I was like, well, that's ridiculous. Um, so that's another thing which I which I'm quite annoyed at because I have a 256 um, SD card, and that it would have been a lot more practical if I could shoot it onto there. Um, also, um, obviously having um, it being able to shoot onto an SD card would have been a lot better as well because SD cards are a lot cheaper than CF Express cards. So, I mean, for the for the same price, I got 128. Uh, well, this, I could have probably got easily a 512 gig um, SD card and probably still had change. So, I, I, I don't know what that's all about. But that's really the only things I have to complain about Canon. Um, but all in all, it is a phenomenal camera. It's future-proofed. It's ready to go in terms of, like, once 8K becomes available in more places, um, then I'm I'm sort of I'm sort of ready for that. But as as it currently stands, 8K really isn't it's not really worth it. Um, but the R5 is nice. Now, bonus tip: if you want to get your hands on an R5, I bought mine on eBay from I cannot remember that. I'll leave the shop in the description below. 
um, where I bought my R5 from. Whether there's another one available, I don't know. I know there was two available. I bought one of them, so there's still one available. Obviously, I thought it might have been a bit sketchy being from eBay, so what i done is I actually compiled a folder full of evidence, um, basically against the seller. Um, obviously, I, I messaged them and said, yo, like, is this actually in stock or is it pre-order? Because obviously, this you, you just can't get this anywhere. You just, just, you just cannot get it anywhere. Same as the 3090, which I managed to get hold of as well. Um, so I messaged them, compiled a, a, a basically a file of evidence, basically against them almost, if, if anything went wrong. Um, but luckily, no, nothing went wrong. Uh, the delivery time wasn't brilliant. Um, I mean, they definitely could have shaded off a bit of delivery time. But one thing I will say, obviously, this camera body only, I believe, from Canon Direct or Jessup's, you're talking 4,199. The lens, which is a 24 to 105, I believe is 1,199. So add them together, you're talking 5,300 and 99 somewhere around there i actually managed to get this for 5099 bang on so i actually saved myself 200 quid which was again was what the reason that i thought mm, this might be a little bit sketchy but i just thought you know what let me compile a load of evidence together compiled all the evidence i could together against the seller obviously messages and stuff like that um and um and then and then i just bought it but um luckily yeah i mean it, it came it works it's fine it's not a, it's, um like a uh, like a prototype model, which I thought maybe another reason it might have uh, been so cheap, but no, it's not. It's, it is a standard model. So, like, happy days. Um, another thing, 3090, if you want to get hold of one of them, which is an NVIDIA graphics card, and this has nothing to do with the video, but I might as well throw it in anyway. Um, th again, they're not available anywhere. You cannot buy 3090s anywhere. Um, the, re the way I got it was I went onto eBuyer and actually bought a pre-built PC. Now, my idea was buy this pre-built PC, if it's crap, take the card out and build on the PC. But luckily, obviously, I looked at the specs on it, but I don't really know too much about Intel. Um, but it has their 10900K in it. So it's their really, their brand new processor as well. So both of them matched together at absolutely flawless quality. But my, my idea was to just build on the computer if, um, if worse comes to worse. But it's not. It's amazing. I love it. Um, and again, I managed to save myself money on that as well. I, I, that was... Uh, I worked out if I'd bought, and that's re it's really weird because it was a pre-build. So I worked out if I'd paid for parts and 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 got it all delivered, it would have come to like three thousand eight hundred or something. I managed to get it for three four nine nine or something. So I actually got a really really good deal. So yeah, hop, hop onto eBuyer if you want to get a thirty ninety. Um, you might have to buy a pre-build, but obviously, as like I've said, that the, their pre-builds are pretty good and you'll save yourself money. Um, if not, then it, it, there's a website called like Gladiator or something, and they've also got thirty nineties available. And I know eBuyer ha currently have their pre-orders for three at thirty nineties available. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there, there's places you just have to look around to get hold of them, but that's obviously just depends on whether you actually want to get a thirty ninety or, or an R five. I mean, they're obviously not items which are, are, are that cheap. Um, but just just a bit of um, bit of advice if you do. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the footage from um, earlier in the video. That was a uh, 4K 120, absolutely stunning footage. Hope you enjoyed little Pedro's footage as well. If you don't know who Pedro is, he's my drone. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed the style of video, please let me know down in the comments below because I'd like to do more of this kind of stuff. But I just don't know whether it's actually gonna work if that makes sense. Um, and I know I shouldn't really care too much, but I obviously don't want to upload videos that no one really wants to see. But um, I'm enjoying it, so I probably will upload it. Up, upload it. Um, all in all, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment as well, because it really helps the algorithm. Also, turn that notification bell on, because I know it, uh, YouTube is useless at pushing videos to specific people. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.